It's my headset I'm more comfortable with, so. Are you updated with your laptop? Yeah, uh, I'm just specking with my laptop, yeah. Let's see if this other headset works okay. It's like fans coming out standard too. Audio input capture. Is that uh, this one? Yeah. It's the wrong uh, input right now. Is the sound okay? Yeah, we good. Yeah. Okay. I think everything's okay. I don't know how the levels are with my new headset here. I've switched to my standard one. I was actually using my backup before that. But hopefully everything is okay. Everybody's here. Everybody can hear me alrighty. I think this is a good answer. Okay. Okay. Then, yeah, I, I like it. Alright, we're here. First game of the Grand Finals, UBC Esports taking on Kowlin Monks, the rematch from earlier today. Kowlin Monks were able to close out a crazy 55 minute game against UBC Esports in which UBC managed to hold on their last racks for what seemed like three or four full pushes into it because of the, uh, the play that was coming up from this really strong Enigma player who had, you know, black hole after black hole coming out. But both teams building towards a solid draft already. I uh, <laughs> was changing some setting stuff and we're already into things, but UBC Esports manages to pick up their disruptor, their support of preference they've been taking throughout this tournament, wherever they can get it. Should uh, be interesting to see what they're able to do with it again this match. Response, the 4-5 coming out from Kowloon Monks, Night Stalker and Shaman. Good pairing of classic heroes, very strong. Great push, good in the early game, and uh, you know, falling off a little bit later. But both of these heroes can can play really strong in the early mid game. Tiny is the pickup for UBC Esports. A good core, probably gonna be seen back on uh, Big Fun Theory again. But uh, you know, we'll see. It, it was maybe it was Jelly Bean Bob actually last game that played it off lane. I'm trying to recall, it might have been their off laner. Regardless, it's a flexible pick. They can put wherever they want. Uh, in terms of bans, we've got the usuals we've been seeing throughout today. ET Respect ban from UEC Esports. I know Captain Canuck on Kowloon Monks plays a mean e Elder Titan. He's been using it throughout the uh, games today. Um, bans on a lot of the normal offlaners here. we got Nobody Wants to Play Beast, Omni, or the tied today it seems maybe brew will be uh, yeah, taken somewhere still on the table been banned a couple of these previous games um, ET respect ban for real yeah the the tiny was on bun theory or jelly bean one of the two I think it was uh, jelly bean Last band coming out here from Khaled Monks, thinking a little bit. They've got their pick immediately afterwards. Oh, and one more band from UBC Esports, of course. It's going to be the OD. No, sh no Shadow Fiend, no OD. Some mids, premier mids taken out of the pool this patch. Hmm, going to be interesting to see what that leaves for the mid. Bands are coming hot and quick here. Hmm. Maybe not that hot and quick, actually, but bands are coming out regardless. <laughs> Looking, so it's the Luna band as well. Carry. Everybody's trying to say if we take this and and not really talk about the picks that they're wanting to take, which is understandable. Everybody being in the same room, Brew makes it in this time. Banned out the previous two matches I watched GBC Esports playing. So, Brew sneaks through the drafting phase, and they're gonna probably have that as their offlaner. Could switch into mid, but very likely the offlane. Just makes it a real pain for the carry to last hit in that lane. No Razor either. Hmm.
<laughs> Grand finals coming up. I'm trying to make sure everybody's aware. UBC thinking about this draft, taking their time. It's going to reveal the spot Tiny is going to be playing. Probably offlane. Seems to be where he's like shaking out this patch. He was played one for a bit, but you can just do the same thing coming out of the offlane. If you don't have a terrible matchup. Hmm. Gyro coming out again for UBC Esports. Want to choose go twos? Hey, that's a bar. All right. <laughs> Chu's been playing Gyro a few games today. So far, so good with it. I think he's pretty. I think he's undefeated with it. I'm not sure. But uh, we'll see how the Gyro ends up shaking out for the team. One of the heroes that can lane up against Brew all right. I mean, he can deal damage to Brew through the uh, mischance with his rocket barrage there, which is nice. Hmm. How these drafts are going to get rounded out will be interesting to see. Kaolin picking a bit of an early draft so far. The Jug is a perfect complement to these cores already. They're pretty melee focused so far, but Jug is uh, definitely able to push early game, help sustain pushes with that healing ward. This is looking to shape up to be a bit of a a bit of a run at you game from Kaolin monks. All of these heroes want to just, you know, charge and, and throw down the shaman wards, split up and start pressuring towers and Brew and Night Stalker and Jug all just want to just hit you and get on you and get up in your face and play where you don't have space. So we'll see if they're able to do so as uh, effectively as they're hoping, but yeah, so far so good. We can just like leave um, like mids in the pool for them to pick from, and then we get a better counter pick out of that, right? We just leave, like, They're thinking about mid laners here. We could ban right? And carries here. So UBC Esports needs a four and a mid. They probably take their four here. Four is left in the pool. There's no Naga, no Night Stalker, no Elder Titan. So Premier Fours remaining are probably Sand King and Clockwork. Wouldn't be shocked to see either of those two picked up. Clock, known to work pretty well with the Disruptor. Sand King, Clockwork, Nyx Assassin, Treant Protector, all options. Riki Maru could come out. It's gonna be Slardar, another one I do refu refuse to mention, <laughs> wasn't able to mention, but Slardar is gonna be the choice for the 4 for UBC Esports, provides some more control, blink stun, minus armor, helps them Roche, they got the Dire side for that, UBC been playing Dire almost every game today it seems, but uh, we'll see how this Slardar pick pans out for them, last ban available for Kaolin Monks, Probably going to be a mid hero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see what mid they don't want to deal with. Hopefully it's like a tinker or something. I'm really not into that kind of a game. But, you know, Storm's still in the pool to counter that. And uh, lots of mids still open. OD gone. SF gone. TA now gone. We'll see what's left. Quap on the table. There's Invoker always, but I don't know how much you want to do that. UBC might want some more physical damage to go with this minus armor from Sardar. It's going to be an interesting one. There's a few mids still in the pool. Dragon Knight's hanging around. No Tinker, thank god. I'm, I'm on team No Tinker. That's probably my first ban and the majority of my ranked games, if someone doesn't already. Spirit Breaker and Tinker are just the most obnoxious heroes to play against. They just change the way the game's played and it's not fun. <laughs> Alright, what are we going to deal with here? UBC Esports, fifth pick, mid hero, ban TA, then who, who does TA have a great matchup against? Someone low armor probably, one of these like cloth and heroes. And someone that doesn't do dot damage, obviously. I don't feel like Storm is a good hero on this game. Yeah, and I think our, our play style is really... Like, and they're gonna round out with the deuce, the last pick for UBC Esports. Really showing up that late game. 
And uh, this leaves Kowlin the options of trying to go over the top of this Medusa and just run them down the early game they've already established, or to hedge their bets and take a scaling mid for themselves. They, they understand they need to hit this timing. We'll see if they manage to. Mm. Difficult pick on this last one. You need the hero that rounds your draft out. Something that scales decently, that can lane against the Medusa mid. Something that, uh, something that's just rounds the draft out. Something that hits towers, probably. Something ranged, I think. You don't really want some kind of melee. I was gonna say Razor against this uh, Medusa, but that's banned out. Medusa's not gonna move very much. They have seem to be in agreement about their last pick, and it's gonna be the DK. Yeah, DK got mentioned earlier. It really synergizes with their team in terms of, in terms of hitting this early timing they're looking for. And uh, they should really be able to come online early this game and make some action happen. Julius Caesar back on his jug, same as last game. He did some work there with it. But uh, on a bit more of a time pressure this game is Kowlin Monks. They've chosen and elected for the earlier game draft. And their power spike is definitely going to occur before UBC. But if UBC is able to hold their high ground, similar to the this guy's previous game, and able to defend on one racks for till 55 minutes, UBC is definitely advantage. I would say... Kowlin Monks start falling off at like 35 minutes, or even 30, um, where that's where UBC is trying to reach. So this is going to be a classic game of stall Dota versus push Dota. The uh, onus is on the Kowlin Monks, but I think they have a draft that can make plays and get involved and push towers well enough that they can really pressure down these towers at the timing they need to. So gonna see how these lanes shape up we expect the big bun mid jelly bean off to safe lane we'll see how that plays out dk for the mid starting items low on regen but shared tangles should be fine julius caesar headed to lane everybody go into their respective lanes interesting laning start coming out from the radiant team here with these heroes grouped here Trying to be, again, for those of you just joining us, as non-specific as possible. I am in the same room as these people playing this game as it's happening live around me. So trying not to speak explicitly on smokes or rotations or roshans, but I'm going to try my best to uh, still convey everything for you guys. Everyone's posturing around their runes, doing their thing. People getting ready for that 15-second uh, initiation mark. I don't, no, you don't want to Two posturing in the right spot you don't want to for the moment. 20 seconds. Start moving in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And there we go. Now, no, it's the 10 second move. It's not the 15. But uh, 10's the time to go. That'll be a free double secure. Julius Caesar pressured, but gonna spin and just take his bounty and walk that one off. That's three bounties for Radiant, but Julius may be being pressured. I think he can just walk this off. He's gonna have to either health pot or go back, but I think he's just gonna be fine. Maybe like early salve. This guy's exposed up here. Good thing about early salve. Jellybean Bob able to pull the creep wave off of this. Puts Julius in a pretty rough spot starting this lane. See the uh, way that these creeps shake out the other side. There was not a pull on this wave able to get secured, so it's going to be advantage Jelly Bean. He's going to get his level two off that, and that really helps the tiny in lane. He needs that kind of start because he sucks at level one a bit. He just doesn't have many tools. Um, S S going to be rotating here to join the action. Initiation coming out. Clap is going to connect, and Chu's just getting run down, but that was a great crush from Monka S, and they're going to turn around. Not going to be the first blood. Not going to be the first blood there either on Captain Canuck. Um, and Captain Canuck is going to get beaten down too. This is back and forth in the extreme. Three heroes back top real quick for the dire side. Another crush is available, and they might find the shaman here. He's going to go down too, I think. Dolph in trouble, and that was a quick three for one. But... I'm not sure who got first blood. It's kind of weird where it doesn't show if the 
If the creeps get the first kill, it won't display that it's first blood, and I'm not really sure what happens with that, but regardless, we're on fourth blood right now, so things are just playing out. There really shouldn't be any kill potential in this mid lane. Um, both these heroes should get their farm. Dolph finds the shackles on Tiny here, but Julius Caesar is just uh, here to CS. IDC heroes, he says. I'm just here for the creepos. Top lane, get involved. Slardo's beating people. Oh yeah, I'll drop down the CS. Good call, good call. Showing off the uh, early start. Bun Theory and Wei both finding their farm mid as much as they can. Uh, Bun Theory is actually kind of getting handled low-key by Wei. Finding lots of denies here. But uh, as Bun Theory gets some stats up, that'll become easier for him. Uh, both teams, you know, just kind of trying to get their farm where they can. Not trying to put out too many hardcore rotations. Top is the most contested lane at the minute, but they're trying to find farm everywhere. Tiny's a really good scaling core to have out of the off lane. There's just so much scaling on this dire side from everywhere. Julius finding a crit, but that's a turnaround, and he's just done with the Tiny combo. Two level one spells, and that was real quick. Unfortunate that that worked like that. Mr. V up here farming behind the tower, able to pull to the tier two. Really well done. That's some good lane control for him as more creeps enter his tower range up here. Oh man, that's a kill back on the tiny. Punishment and revenge for Julius Caesar. Feels good getting that one after you get smacked 1v1. Way just finding the farm. Got that soul ring up. Able to breathe fire all over the place. Dragon style. Bun theory dropping pretty low. Needs to sustain his mana and poke with that snake as best he can. Way with the two points in dragon blood already, probably not getting harassed down very easily. These autos just tickle. Oh, and there's a rap coming here. Mr. V getting crushed. The disruptors coming out, and the homing missile should be Mr. V getting caught out here. With that homing missile, that should be the kill. They're gonna lock him down, and they're gonna give it. Oh, Code steals it from two. Night Stalker's now found the Tiny though. Shaman's here. Tiny wants to turn. Dolph has got the shackles. Ko's showing up though. It's a 2v2. And Ko thrown onto Dolph. They're gonna kill this Shamino. Shadow Shaman goes down and they're gonna have to rotate out of here on the Radiant side. Captain Canuck poking at Ko. Getting some autos off but there's three heroes here and Captain Canuck can't do 3v1. Hmm. Julius Caesar finding the farm bot. Leading on CS is the Radiant team, but kills are in favor of the Dire, so we'll see how this plays out. Mid is, is pretty Radiant favorite at the moment. 14 CS on Medusa, she's getting catching up a little bit, but uh, still being doubled up on here by the Dragon. Chu laning against Mr. V, both are getting their XP. Mr. V got kind of caught in an unfortunate spot, but he's been doing good pulling these uh, creep waves and getting the XP where he can, if not the farm. Both offlaners kind of struggling to find the farm. Doing okay, as expected. Julius just hitting the creeps. Quilla off so he doesn't push that lane. Night Stalker harassing Jellybean just doesn't want him coming back in the lane at all. Night Stalker's preventing the uh, shrine activation, but Ko's going to be there and it's going to secure it. Jellybean and Bun Theory going to sh shrine up together. Way with the first dragon form of the game. Trying to get some tower pressure out. Uh, no boots yet on this Jellybean Bob. Mr. V with his boots going towards phase. Whoa, mid is being initiated on Medusa. Shackles and stuns coming out. Very tanky with that mana shield. Second level in it? Yeah. They're going to find the combo on... Oh, both of them here. It's going to be a two for nothing. Dolph goes down as well. Really good rotation in from UBC. UBC Esports just sends four heroes mid lane, and the sheer numbers just outplay those characters here from Radiant. Slarda are going to run into Mr. V, but uh, that's going to be a no, no kind of exchange. Tiny just boxing Julius Caesar where he can. Two tower hits, not fun. 
Chu struggling to last hit under this brew uh, mischance thing, but uh, you know doing what he can. Ward expected here, not gonna be found out. Some maneuver coming in from Radiant side. Smoke's gonna break. Captain Canuck finds Q Chu as the choice, but that call down is just gonna roll through on Mr. V, and that's a ton of damage. Julius Caesar's here, and they're gonna find two in return. That's really good. That's gonna turn super worth for Radiant with the three man kill. All three going to Captain Canuck, the captain of this uh, Calid Monk's team. Really good cleaning up on the floor there with that rotation. They don't mind Brew going down there at all. Finishes his phase boots here, really important. Julius with a great rotation top, not expected in the least. Captain's going over the top, gets crushed under tower, he's going to have to back off. But uh, it was a nice aggressive play to be made in the night time. Night expiring in 40 seconds, so he wanted to get the harass out he could and fly while he could. Um, Gyros here, flacking it up, trying to get the last hits while he's not brewed. Dragon Knight is permanently a dragon now. Not permanently, but he's dragon in around uh, mid tower down to half health. Pressure being applied. Hard for Medusa to contest right now when she's kind of behind on stats like this. She's pretty tanky though. The last time they tried to kill her, it turned into a two for nothing in the other way. So I don't know if they can bring her down, but they're putting pressure and making it difficult for her to uh, to lane at the very least. Top lane, gets glimpsed, Mr. V, into the call down. Really tough being level 5 at this point. You really want that 6. Oh, Jellybean Bob finds another one bottom too. It's this Shamino. Sh Shaman support gets cut. Toss max from this tiny. Captain Canuck waiting on this courier. And there you go. TP back up from Mr. V. Phase boots all around coming out pretty soon. Drum in progress for this gyro. Co stacking. New patch, new stack rules. Wow, lots of stacks. So well done here for Dire Side. Three stacks at once. Julius is farming where he can find farm. Tiny forced under the tower. We're forcing pressure under the tower. Captain Canuck trying to find the initiation here. <laughs> Difficult kills to be had though, especially mid here. With all the support coming in. Whew. Right now, interestingly, Radiant is ahead on CS with the ex like mostly but uh, they're quite behind on kills so this game overall is like very even 1k advantage for the dire side that's it because the lanes were going in the radiant favor but then they just took a couple bad fights where they were outnumbered with good rotations off of this uh, ra dire side Julius going for that battle fury this game Battle Fury good this patch. Tower did go down mid. The pressure finally got to it. It cracked under pressure, one might say. Mr. V Dota making a rotation with his supports. Julius pushing out waves, trying to get this under tower. Everybody thinks there's wards everywhere, but there aren't. I spot Jelly Bean Bob. Pings coming from both teams. Indicating pressure should be applied mid lane. Bot Tower, meanwhile, being five balled by this Kowlin Monks team. They like grouping up and they like taking towers. Meanwhile, UBC trying to take two towers simultaneously. Tiki's going to come in from this Mr. V Dota here, trying to get the space so he doesn't get glimpsed. Oh, glimpse gonna come out on the Shimino. Only two heroes, three heroes here. But they're gonna engage. Nah, no, they're just kidding. They aren't gonna fully fight this. Shaman got glimpsed back bottom, but they did get the bot tower off of it. And they, I mean, it was trade mid for bot. Gyro actually is getting top as well, so.
kind of got to be UBC Esports favorite on this trade. Two towers for one. <sighs> Ooh, sorry. Drums coming out on this tiny. Seems to be a very drum-oriented patch. Drums on tiny. No drums on jug. No drums. Yeah, maybe not this game, but... Drums abound in this patch, it seems. Gyro has one. People love that move speed build in Gyro. Should be the uh, SNY coming out next. D D. <sighs> Double damage is being discussed. People are suggesting taking it. Top two. Top two two being pressured. Well, being gestured for it. The pressure is going to come after the tier one. Fun theory splitting though. They're taking some good damage on the spot tier two. Captain Canuck's going to find Ko. Glimpse is going to come off. Ko with low health, but he's going to be able to get out of that. He pulls off the, uh, the nice sucker from him, manages to peel it off. They get the top tier one. They're going to scare off the uh, Bon Theory and catch Jellybean. He might go down. Yeah, he's going to go down for sure. That was good. And they stopped the tier two from right now, but that's a free B top. They almost found a kill here on the Disruptor, and then they did find a kill bottom on Tiny. So good rotations coming up from, from this Kowloon Monks team. Radiant. That sound like Barrier Bop for a second? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Urn is on the way. Completed now for the Snow Stalker. Yet to see an ulti from this uh, Brewmaster. Just looking for the spot. Sometimes you gotta wait for it. Real close to this Battle Fury soon. <coughs> Ko asks for the pause. Discord Proble Masare. I feel that. Me too, dude. Discord Proble Me. They're just avoiding fights, right? And so what we do is we take control. This pause is out, and uh, everybody's discussing tactics during the uh, Discord issues being resolved. Yeah. I'm posting this stream so people can see it. And then go on stuff like the or whatever. Yeah, it depends. Depends on what the situation is, of course. Yeah. We're waiting on um, Canuck, though, right now. Like, I don't think we brought Unshield Post. We're hopping back in as soon as Discord is resolved for everybody. This is black cold coffee, and it's so delicious right now, believe it or not. It's exactly what you need. Dude, this is the sickest mace from the Slardar right now. Look at that thing. I love that one. It's like the uh, Immortal, huh? It's 10, 10, 9. What's it called? Pike of the Sunken Gaol Gowler? Go Gowler, I think? Illustrious. What's Illustrious look like? Mm. Weird. This is the one. This is the set that came from the uh, the battle pass. Is it right? Oh, he's got the he's got the the different version. No, he doesn't have illustrious for either. No sweat. This is a uh, posturing being set up bot here. Medusa no TP, essentially. TP not on the courier either. So it's gonna be a four-man defense at best. Prob it's gonna be a four-man defense probably. Oh, pretty low to be fighting here, but 
Yeah, this uh, would this could work out in Radiant favor. Coffee is necessary. So, punch somebody with that stretch. Close quarters here. I like the squeaky of that mouse. I don't know what that was, but something's chittering and squeaking when I got my camera here. It's pretty cute. Pretty cute. All right. <coughs> oh, I don't know. My mute is here actually. Low. I switched headsets. Forgot about that. Okay, we're gonna see this posturing turning into a tower push. Radiant's going to drop those wards real early. Get them out there and start poking on that tower. Chu trying to clean up with that flak. Taking a one t ward at a time. There's the call down and they're going to... Wow. They just evaporated that brewmaster before he could get split off, unfortunately. They're going to clean up these wards, too. That toss combo under the static storm was too much. Four heroes bottom for the dire side, and they got space for Medusa here. TP now available for her. Picked it up from the side shop. Invasion coming from uh, the CBC Sports side. Chu just farming all over the place with this flak. Bottom tier two looks to be the target. Shimino making moves in mid. Cute little ward barrier. Nobody seems to be aware of all of these wards everybody's got. Chu farming, done that uh, Yasha on the way to the SNY. Expected. Captain Canuck looking for plays to be made. Yeah, we go, we go here. Oh, Slardar's not going to get the stun off just yet. There's the crush. And they glimpse away the brew, but they're going to capture Ko, and that should be a freebie on the disruptor here. Mr. V is going to pick up the kill. Mm. So that's a freebie on Ko. The glimpse didn't disengage the brew long enough. He was still uh, shackled and got cut. The disruptor was shackled. Um, looking to be blink first for tiny. Not a bad choice. Slardar is working his way towards one two. Oh, Chu is pushing in for Mr. V Dota. The split is gonna come out and it's gonna prevent that glimpse from getting him. Stun is gonna connect on Chu and it's gonna follow up into shackles, but they kind of stack their stuns here and they can't burst him down. This is gonna be dire UBC Sports pushing through, cleaning up Shadow Shaman, chasing for the Dragon Knight. Julius Caesar's here on the jug, but he doesn't want in either. Dragon Knight's trying to turn, gets the stun off. Julius Caesar comes across three level one bounces. Ko ran, runs out. They're going for the cores now, trying to focus importantly in this fight. The uh, split is over, but neither of these guys can land autos now with the brew around. Lots of stuns coming out. The clap is going to connect. Jellybean Bob with a good combo on two heroes, cleaving but not getting enough. Captain Canuck picks up another two. He's just getting all these last hits. Keem Captain is just cleaning up. Second triple kill of the game. Dragon Knight stun. They're going to follow up, and it's going to be the five for one. Julius Caesar going down at the end, but five heroes certainly makes it worth it. Didn't necessarily need to fall there. Got a little sloppy, too in, too long, but, you know, it's happened to the best of us, and the rest of his teammates are certainly able to take this tier two while he's gone. Shimino finding levels and XP while pushing bottom solo. And uh, Gyro yeah, cancels like his TP. Disruptor chooses to complete. He does. And uh, Radiant's out of there, though. Yeah, yeah. Tower goes down. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shaman finding his level nine pretty soon. Getting up there for uh, you know the level two ultimate pretty shortly. And his talent 
He's got that XP gain talent at level one, 10. Very crucial. Yeah. We got him. It was worth Like, he's so far ahead. He's mm. level 12 right now. So good. Ooh, so far ahead. Looks like Dyer yeah. is getting the uh, farm advantage over their side. Those flash farming mechanisms on both of their ranged cores making it really easy to find CS. A few characters oh under God. the uh, cover of darkness here, you know what I'm saying? Roman and trying to find the space. Oh, very close, close on this brewmaster here. Looking for his uh, pickup of a dagger. His shadow blade for this uh, DK. Drums of his own, didn't mention that yet. Tier 2 looking to be the uh, spot for this dire side. Eyes have been on this for a while. Dyer are going to push into this tier 2. Glyph is going to come out. Radiance trying to take the exchange. UBC Esports cleans up the tier 2 bottom. And uh, Kaolin Monks barely tickling into the tier 2 right now. Supports forced to leave, trying to make this defense at the high ground, which is being poked. Bun Theory and Shu just link in the high ground, not really minding. Caesar and Wei have got to make a rotation back real soon. Caesar six seconds on his TP. There's going to be the Shaman Wards used defensively. That's a split coming up perfectly. Dragonite stunned. Gyro's going to drop. Bun Theory gets off his ultimate and they're able to disengage. Slardar with the blink stun. Knight used by the Night Stalker and they're going to stop that Ko TP. For sure, Ko's definitely a freebie here. Seeing if they can catch up to the others but doesn't look like it. It's Night Stalker chasing, but not going to find the uh, kills he needs. Bun Theory sticking around, low mana. I don't think he can TP out, though. Captain Canuck really wants to chase this, but I don't think it's happening. That was a great fight and a really solid defense for this Radiant side. They took half tower damage, but they dropped and they dropped wards, but that rotation was able to catch that gyro really handily with the Dragonite stun. The Medusa ult wasn't enough to uh, peel them off and, and stop the initiation on Jairo. They shoved the wave in mid, but they're not going to fully commit right now. Jairo rotating back out to his favorite farming spot in the whole game. Don't know if you guys have seen a Jairo farming here before, but it turns out it's pretty effective to flat cannon the three camps at once. Great use of the call down, just farming it up. Very low cooldown ultimate, happy to use that for stacks. Gyro picking up more CS while he can. Medusa and Gyro pulling ahead on CS as expected. Those uh, multi-shot mechanics really good at taking out all the creeps at once. Faster farming means more items more quickly. Wards getting deposited. Both sides. D ward coming out from Captain Canuck. Really well done. Flies over towards Roche. Not going to go there. Just looking for where the vision is. Trying to establish some of their own. Taking a look. Is he going to find this one? He may be. Oh, initiation. This Dragonite up way too far. <laughs> Oi. That's uh, not where you want to be. Not where you want to be. Dragonite thinks there's vision, but there is. Oh, kind of there is. Yeah, it looks like they're trying to do some business here. Both teams seem to be aware of what's going on right now. Relatively. I need this guy dead, or like, silence. They're poking at the start of this. Both teams trying to initiate. Good clap. That's the sp Oh, the split gets interrupted! That was a, such a clutch static storm! Wow, that was a big ult from Julius Caesar, though. That Static Storm was really, really clutch. Stopped the Bruce split from coming out. Julius Caesar getting run down by this Jero really fast with his movement speed build. And that's two cores for just the Disruptor. They're going to have to disengage and maybe concede Roche here. Big, big Static Storm preventing the Bruce split. That would have been a totally different fight had that Static Storm not landed. Came out real quick. Jellybean Bob misses his stun. Captain Canuck looking to poke, but I don't think he can contest. Looks like Radiant might want to fight here. That's a clap. Oh, and they're going in. Medusa caught with no mana shield. Jellybean Bob dropping fast. Captain Canuck in the chase. 
Chu's gonna show up and drop his cooldown. Jelly Bean does go down, but that's a cooldown onto three. Both supports is very low. Dragon Knight finds a second in this fight. Shadow Shaman very low, but he's gonna just hold this disruptor here. Not quite dead. Buyback on both the cores from UBC Esports, and they're gonna have to disengage. But they turn around. Dragon Knight may have to pay for this with this homing missile on the way. Stun's coming out, and that's going to be 3 for 2 in the end, but it's really like 3 for 4 or something. Just good buybacks coming out from Tiny and from the uh, Medusa. Forced, really. Medusa caught with the mana shield off that, that fight, just not wanting to tank Roast with it, and the Shadow Blade of that Dragon Knight really snuck in there and caught them by surprise. Super well played by Wei, but uh, those two buybacks just establish the control for UBC. And they spend a lot of gold there, but I think those were worthwhile buybacks to pull out there for the uh, Roshan. What a fight. Man, there's some huge cooldowns coming out this game, and Disruptor has been on point with preventing these, uh, these splits. It's such a quick skill to cast the Storm, and it's very obvious when Bruce trying to split. He just jumps in and then after the clap, you know, it's split is coming, so. Disruptor very on point with those so far. We're gonna look to see this brew get involved in these subsequent fights by having that not happen, hopefully. Interesting four staff usage, kind of slowing down his farm, unfortunately. But uh, maybe that's something spotted out here. Bun Theory uses his mom He's got the Aegis, but there's a few heroes on him right now. TP's coming in to support. The Glimpse and the Static Stormer is going to go down. Primal Split gets off. There's no contesting that. Medusa's trapped in the wards, and she's 100% dead. This Jug is going to... Oh, that was a good blink by the Slardar. Maybe if Jug had preemptively spawned, he could have prevented that blink. But uh, these pandas are pandaing through deep into the other side. Wow, Julius Caesar barely surviving that combo, and Tiny's going to get turned. If he's going to get brought down, I'm not sure. The Julius Caesar ulting across the top, getting lots of good bounces. Tanking up, but he's got the healing ward alive. It does go down there. Glimpse back, but all of these heroes still alive for the Radiant team. Good three-man stun coming out from Jelly Bean Bob, but he's going to be controlled up. Lots of great control rotations coming from this Radiant team, and they're taking four kills. That's That's got to be a Rex. There's buybacks down on all of the UBC heroes because of that last fight at Roche, and they're just pushing. That's one set of racks for sure. We'll see if they continue. Homing Missile out. Low health on this uh, Brewmaster. They're just going to take the melee and just walk it off. Let the range racks poke out the... Well, let the creeps poke out the range racks. I'm a little tired. I've been casting for a while, but... That was a great rotation. That was a great back out from the, the Radiant team there. It was a strong fight. Strong fight. Strong fight there from both teams. But good CC rotations. Good in and outs. The, the, the just, it was so clean from Radiant team. Just methodically working down the heroes that were coming out not in a group from the Dire side. The Dire just kind of engaged a little haphazardly, a little one by one. And uh, Radiant definitely knew how to punish them for it there. Just picking one at a time and just slowly working down all five heroes. Another play being made. Hopefully, an important rotation. Looking to catch somebody. Smoke broke. That's a crazy long distance glimpse, but good spin by Julius Caesar to uh, be aware of that and prevent the glimpse from coming out. Brewmaster getting involved, looking towards that BKB of his own, not hoping to uh, get static stormed before getting that BKB off. Yeah, we need some. Solar Crest. I mean, Medallion, but going to be a Solar Crest coming up for Slardar. Medusa looking towards that Chivas, or Scotty, sorry. Uh, a rotation coming through. Interesting positioning. Vision being established. Oh, they found Dusa. The, the split is going to be prevented by a good Static Storm, but Dusa's done. 
the storm catches the uh, brewmaster, but he's he's not able to split. But that's probably for the best. He doesn't need to use the split for that kill, and now they have it for the next fight. Mid tier two gonna be free. I don't think there's any way to contest this with Medusa down. Fifty seconds on the Medusa. Do they go high ground? Jelly Bean Bob trying to do some things. Gyro call down, gonna hit on some heroes, but with the uh, Julius Caesar healing ward micro, they're so far so good. Just trying to work down this tower with the Deusa gone. <laughs> Jelly Bean Bob is pushing bottom, meanwhile. He's got the TP available. He's just trying to contest and get a tier 3 of their own, but they're taking Marax mid. Oh, the back door has started up. They've lost creeps. Did they cut the creep wave mid? Oh, the split's gonna come out. It's gonna get off. Chu with his BKB. The dire seam is just running so back gyro, out of here. Gyro, Disruptor's been disabled. Gyro's way up in the front alone. That BKB is about to expire. Do they have more control? They do. That's the abyssal blade from Julius Caesar. No, it was a bash from somebody. It must have been the rock. But wow, there's two cores down. Two heroes down. The split's gonna expire. Captain Canuck gets caught. He's gonna drop. They gotta disengage here on the radiant. Trying to find the blink. He blinks out on the brew. Very good. And they take another Rex? They're leaving these range. They don't care range Rex, but that's two melee down so far. Brew's going to be followed up and caught by this uh, Slardar, but still, two Rex down. Really, really well done. Just got a little caught on the disengage. Way doesn't really care. Can't be burst. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Careful bottom, careful bottom. I think this is when it... Mm. Yeah. 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 Kills attempting to be established, but uh, not found yet. Rotation coming in very fast. So, so, this <sighs> is favorable? This is favorable? They're going to start so damaging the shrines, given that Tiny was able to find that tier 3 tower bottom. He's just clubbing, just, just boxing down this shrine as much as he can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walking in between these autos like a pro he is. Tiny's yeah, yeah. so slow, you might as well walk around this thing between autos. Even with those treads and the uh, drum. Going for the BKB next, to be expected. Sh switched from the Shivas to a Lincolns, it looks like. Kind of worried about this kind of stun. Coming in with the invis, Glimpse is going to come out. Oh, and that makes the crush miss. But they can disengage this and get Medusa out off of it. That's worthwhile for the Dire side. Shrine coming in return for Radiant, but uh, they're gonna be both sides are gonna be happy with that, especially Dire with that disengage. There's no way that Jelly Bean can take out this brew. He's gonna miss all of his attacks. He's on the creeps. Trying to distract the wave, but uh, not able to pressure it down. Dragon Knight really wants to go up high ground here and start hitting some racks in. But getting a little ahead of himself, given that they don't have creeps to come in yet. No way you can take down that gyro thing before it uh, hits you, unfortunately. BKB is still ready, but the dragon form is going to expire, and they probably want to wait another 60 seconds before fighting again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a great is that a Glimmer Cape? No. Yeah. This? Back and smoke into them. Back and smoke into them. BKB done on Gyro. We saw it in the last fight, but as soon as that BKB expired, he just got ulted by the uh, Jug and brought down. It's a really good fight from last last one by the uh, Radiant team. This Lincoln's on the uh, Medusa. Trying to just block all of the single target control coming out from this Radiant side. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Both teams posturing, looking for the initiation here. Yeah. Yeah. Really feels like Radiant have the reins here in this game. Yeah. It's up to them to make the move. And we said the honest was gonna be on them in the beginning of this game, yeah. but uh they seem to be dictating the pace pretty well. Jelly Bean Bob trying to split where he can, really just coming back and back to this bottom lane. They're trying to invade the Radiant jungle whenever possible. It's a good point on Tiny, where one auto and a toss is enough to break a creep wave. Feels really good. Both teams trying to look for the spot that they need. 
any of the creek spots, they're going to... Dagonite making a move here. Yeah, yeah. Just like Creeps walking into the base. And they're going for this tier 3. Julius Caesar. Oh, they get the hex! Gyro being bursted! Is he gonna survive? 100 to 0. Buyback available on Gyro. There it goes. Taking out the tier 3. Medusa uses the ult. Brewmaster up in the front, disabling this disruptor as much as he can. There's a lot of physical damage coming out on these Bruce splits, but I think he's going to be okay. Calldown is going to catch way, but he BKBs and walks out of the the disruptor business. Racks are low. Both teams... Way is still here with BKB. He's got the stun coming out. Lots of control on this dire side. Nobody dead just yet. Dragon Knight's going to burst from that combo with the tiny. This Brewmaster is way in. They found the hex on the backside. Co-disruptor to fall. Lots of low health people on both sides. Jellybean Bob finds another toss. They're going to take down the Julius Caesar and the Shadow Shaman. Julius Caesar actually does not go down. He's on this uh, jug, manages to escape. But Julius Caesar, the only survivor. They take the tier 3. They take range racks top and bottom off of that. It's just the one set of racks, bottom lane. This is flashbacks to the previous matchup between these two in the qualifiers. When these two games, when these two teams clashed last, this is the exact situation we had established with this bottom racks being the one remaining for UBC Esports, and they held that bottom racks last game for f till 55 minutes. So this game, they're trying to post up and and be methodical about their push. They really hit a good timing there with pushing in when the creeps went in mid. They dropped the shaman wards and they caught out Gyro really early and forced his buyback, but. Uh, after the buyback, UBC Esports were able to defend and route them a little bit. One more push is all that's required from uh, the Kowlin Monks, though, to secure this first game of the Grand Finals. They're in control, but Shiva or Scatty is done for this uh, Medusa, and she's looking for her next item. So it's going to be interesting to see how they choose to take this engagement and which heroes they choose to focus down on this dire side. The gyro was like a crime of opportunity. That was such a clutch hex coming out from Dolph here on the shaman. Going for a very interesting item build himself on the five shaman. This guy's been finding farm I don't know where, but like he's up in the three position right now. Really well done. So this is going to be an interesting initiation here. And it's going to be crazy to see who gets picked. Mm. Sentries are down, guarding their area. Scan is used. Radiant scan. Searching. Roche does go down. Doesn't look like UBC Esports were aware that was transpiring. They find the scan on the way out. Lines drawn on the map. People know where they want to go. We need we need Rotation's so coming out. They're going to find the Medusa on the high ground. She forces low. Blink is available. They're just poking and forcing this UBC team back up to the high ground. Bon Theory is going to TP out. Or Jelly Bean Bob, I mean. Night Stalker sitting up. Getting ready to push in bottom. Posturing. Ward expires. Julius Caesar. Aegis on him. Where's the cheese? Cheese is on the DK. 50 armor, apparently. Like 50 armor. Yeah, pretty close. This man has a lot of armor. It's 47. 70% physical resistance. It's a lot of armor. Like 50. We'll, we'll do. Like 50 armor. Yeah. I think he sold his uh, soul ring at some point. He's getting burst here. He's got the cheese available. Uses that BKB. Combo and... Yo, that's a stun. This brews in. This is going to be the initiation. Call down. Static Storm catches two. Shaman can't drop these wards. He's going to fall. Julius Caesar in the front. This, the Brewmaster is working down the racks when he can. This is the uh, UBC Esports looking like another hold coming out. Cores to fall here. And that's way going to go down on the Dragon Knight as well. Aegis is up. Julius Caesar with the quick blink, but that's Scotty's on him, and he's going to probably fall down here too with the crush follow-up. 
Lots of control. He's not able to spin TP. And they hold again. Range Rex takes some damage, but that's a hold for the UBC Esports. Shaman just couldn't find the wards. That was a great Static Storm by Ko on two. Hard times for this uh, Catalan Monks team. Probably going to lose a tier two off of this. Maybe some tier three pressure. Just gonna see where this UBC Esports team chooses to push. Bun Theory, close to that critical level 25 on Medusa. Jellybean Bob looking towards the AC this game. Medusa is here hitting Rex, just being backdoored. Used the glyph, despite the backdoor being active. Brew is going to go. They find Jelly Bean. This chase is capping Canucks really fast. He's flying over the top, but they don't want it. They changed their mind. No Rex damage is going to be happening, really. Just to disengage off of that. UBC Esports held really close to their base, and all the lanes were pushed, so it was difficult for them to take any objectives off of that. But they managed to force the glyph, at the very least, from this Radiant team. We need to push lanes more, though. Ooh, a maneuver coming. I'll, I'll do this thing. Yeah. Like, they're Dragon Knight pushing out bottom. I think we don't even wait for, um, for creeps. Like, to be, like, we don't wait for these creeps. Mm. We wait for, like, these creeps or these creeps. And we come before. Lots of lines being drawn on the map. Everybody knows yeah, where this next fight's going down. Yeah. It's gonna be right here. We're going to see if the Static Storm is able to... This last Static Storm over on this side was so good versus the Shimino. Dolph looking for the spot. He just wants to throw these down on the high ground, but it's pretty hard, especially with Ko defending. Where's Ko position? He's, like, way in the back. So poor. Just a struggle this game. This Medusa really loves posturing right here. This is like her spot. She's not letting anyone cross the line. That said, last time Dragonite was able to stun her and they were able to initiate over the top on this. Bruise in! Bruise split! Medusa forces the ult, lifted in the air. Bruise disengaging. There's the wards down! Two wards down! Julius Caesar over the top, dropping down, bouncing around a little bit. Chu gonna fall. Glyph is used. The Rax, last Rax in trouble, being pressured by the Brew. They're fighting heroes though, they're fighting heroes, not hitting the Rax. Dragonite almost dropping the Cho. Oh, they're so low. Dra the Tiny's gonna fall, Brew's gonna drop here too. Oh, the Rax are still alive. Those Shaman Wards just out of range of the melee Rax, unable to get involved the way they wanted. But they took the range, they took the first Rax, and the 4 for 2 isn't so bad. It was a good initiation, and, and Shaman found the spot that he could get Rax, the wards off. If they just do that one more time, that's the last Rax, but there's enough defense coming out from this UBC Esports team that Megas might not be GG this game. The first game of our grand finals going the distance here with UBC Esports taking on Kaolin Monks, holding this last Rax just so hard to take against the U clean play of UBC Esports. Really good with their positioning, holding their front line with the Gyro and Dusa, and this Slardar jumping all over the place. There's so much control for them. I think. That fight had everybody focused on this Rax instead of hitting heroes. If this DK had been hitting it with the Brew, I think they might have been able to take it down. But DK was focusing on Chu, who was able to kite out at really low health. Wow, the disengage call down? I lied, maybe. I thought there was a call down cast there, but it sounded, it sounded like it. But maybe that was just his taunt. Mm. Disruptor pushing out pot lane. This dire team has a chance against the uh, Mega Kripos. Looks to be a Satanic on Chu next. Medusa going for 
the one item that uh, you get when you're down. Ooh. That's a sneaky play. It's going to be interesting to see if anything's happening with this. Oh, do it. Do it. Do it. Oh, yeah, that's the path. That's the route he should take. <laughs> Not sure it's going to happen that way, but that's how it should go down. Wow. He's sneaking in. Is he doing it? Is he just doing it? No way, no way, no way. He's hiding. Oh my god. Dude, this is getting spicy. This positioning is really, really interesting here. This is a fight about to start. UBC Esports waiting high ground. We have wards down. Trying to cover the whole space. It's going to be interesting to see how UBC chooses to defend this and how Kaolin want to engage. Homing missile coming out. I saw a line being drawn there. I hope that wasn't the uh, reveal we were not hoping for. Wow, Brew's going to blink in. That's the split. They're going for this Rex. Last Rex being harassed. They found the Shaman on the side. They found the Shaman on his own. But they take the last Rex. That's Mega Creeps. They've lifted the Medusa, and they're trying to disengage. They don't want any more of this at all. Unfortunately, that Earth Panda in the back, in kind of an awkward spot. The Stomp is going to fall. Oh. No crush coming out yet. Medusa uses the ultimate, and they have to get away from this. Just disengage as much as you can. Way with the BKB might be the one to fall. He has to be the sacrificial lamb. They got to disengage on Radiant here. Way yeah. fell down. Good spin from Julius Caesar, trying to get his way out of here. Megas are up, but uh, Dyer wants more kills off of this. They found the Shaman early, but uh, and they cleaned up the DK, but that was Megas. That was well enough done. Shaman on his own over here, despite going down without casting anything, he just bought the space for this last Rex to drop. Really well done. Good jump in by Mr. V, Dota, as well as the Julius Caesar Jug. They just uh, took the last Rex. That said, this is a team that can come back for Mega Creeps. As we've reiterated, Medusa and Gyro, very good at killing Krepos. Lots of AoE damage, lots of strong late game items on all of these heroes. And uh, they're trying to make use of this space. Oh, the global call down from Gyrocopter. That's why I didn't notice where the call down went last time. Is that the uh, talent? That's the ultimate. Yeah, or the 25 talent. Crush coming out. Captain Canuck just pushing in. He don't care if there's heroes. He don't care he's at the enemy base. He's pushing. Night Stalker is just shoving waves. Trying to get out of here now. Slardar is looking for him. And that's uh, caught up Canuck. Wow, they find Ko! <laughs> what a turnaround kill by Canuck. Really cheeky play there. And uh, these Mega Creeps pushing in pretty good for this uh, Radiant team. Difficult for Dyer to shove the waves. Especially with Nice Sucker pushing so far up like that. I'm going to switch from last hits. I don't think it's so very uh, indicative right now. Net worth is probably more important. There's a 7k gold lead for this Dyer side, but you wouldn't know it if you looked at the buildings. This uh, this early game strat from, from Kaolin Monks is seeming to work out pretty well. And now with the support of Mega Creeps, they're going to have an easier time battling these heroes to try to take down Tier 4s. But uh, they they have broken the base. They've broken the racks. And, and this is the time I said that their draft was going to fall off. So it's going to be interesting to see how they're able to take this last fight. I mean, if it is the last fight. <coughs> Reduce and Gyro probably should be pushing different sides of the map because Slardar is definitely not the one to take out Krepos. Long game again from these two teams. Probably looking at another 50 minute or. Like Shadow Shaman has room to grow as well. Shaman is ready. He's been prepared for a while. How do we check um, this? Almost everybody ready with the buybacks. So this next fight is not going to be the... Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. That's an item pickup. We're in a serious game here, boys. <laughs> I think Bun Theory is just going to sit 
right here for the rest of the game and just make sure that nobody that nobody comes in his space. He's got the <laughs> he's got this in the backpack. And so he's just here to not move and just, just guard this zone. Let's see if Radiant notice the new pickup. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Hey, if they have Aegis, that means they have one less item in their inventory, which means they're weaker. <laughs> you can still play them enough, so mm. yeah. You see Aegis and the Shard on this gyro. Cheese on the Dusa. Does this rupture of eggs? Whoa. That was some interesting posturing. Yeah, yeah. Stun gonna miss. Invis coming out from the DK. Just trying to push in the waves. Ko gets off the. Uh, I think you go the most obvious route. Here. This is this route. They're gonna lock in the DK. He's ready. He's got his BKB. There's the BKB on the initiation. Forces the Medusa ult. That's a stunned Dragonite. He's gonna just drop. How does he get out of there? Good disarm. He's chucked out. He's chucked into the healing ward. Second chuck. Julius Caesar gets invised. Oh, the wards on the tier fours. Great wards by the shaman. He's gonna take both tier fours with that. Shaman not even dead for it. She's used on the Dusa. They're trying to focus her. Trying to fight into this. Medusa gonna stand and fight. Slardar to fall. Chasing. Onto it. Slardar's got the bot back. Ancient taking heavy damage. Medusa standing and fighting. Chu standing and fighting. Shaman to fall. But that's the only Radiant hero killed. And they took tier 4s and half of the Ancient right there. Really, really well done by this Radiant team. Just kind of kiting and and managing these dire heroes with the brew split lift and with the uh, dragon knight stunts and and all the silences coming out. Super sneaky. I don't know how this shaman got into position to drop these wards, but he really just managed to sneak up in there. And <laughs> Wayne here, big bun theory, told to wake up because the base is under attack. Push out coming. Julius Caesar blinks and spins and dodges it. Support needs to be there for him. He mantas. Julius Caesar taking heavy pressure. Calldown's going to wipe him out. Buyback is available. Shaman's already dead. Dire Courier down with the butterfly on it. But that's going to be another pick on this Dragon Knight too. That's uh, two cores and the Shamino who got picked earlier. But uh, Night Stalker's here. Finds Ko on his own. Ko in trouble, TP coming back and TP going out, and yeah, Tiny gonna not be able to get involved. Night Stalker is kiting off of that. Brew TP's back. Chu and Slardar trying to ba break into this high ground. Chu's so low on mana, not even able to use Slack as much as he wants. There it goes. Wiping those mega creeps. I think we jump here. Oh, they get the hex. Oh, the four staff away. Gyro so fast with this item build. Just impossible to catch him. The hex was a good start, but they just purged that real quick. That's the fire panda going down. No problemo. The remaining pandas just chilling. Oh, he's at the hex on brew. That's what it was. I, th I didn't think it was the shaman. Oh, Jelly Bean Bob finds shaman. That's the bots are coming out to him, and Medusa's here too. They catch both supports. Medusa with the bots too. TPing out to the tiny, able to take him out. These catapults plinking down this ancient. Meanwhile, Fru trying to find the angle. Mid being pushed. Bots two on this Medusa, ready to engage. Gyro's the one defending. Jellybean Bob trying to pressure Rex. I don't think Radiant Mind's losing a Rex here too badly. But, you know, we never know. Miss is coming out for that tiny. Probably Miss is going to be on the Wayne Bun Theory too. Oh, that's a Dragon Knight in your base. He's BK beat up. Lots of damage coming out. Gyro's going to die. Disarmed. Unable to lifesteal back up. Dragon Knight taking the game. Calls GG in all chat. Hopefully that doesn't go through. And that's it.
Calvin Monks able to take out UBC Esports in a long, grindy 52 minute game. Very reminiscent of their first matchup today. Barely able to take out that last Rax and just slowly, suicide after suicide, working down tier fours in the ancient. What a match. Oh my god. That's game one. We're here for a best of three. Wow. UBC Esports toppled in the game one of the best of three. Kowlin Monks with the early game draft coming through and Wei just going and taking the racks out, the Ancient out the only way he knows how. Oh my god, what a fight. What a game. Unbelievable. UBC Esports drops game one. Both teams need a minute to just talk about what just happened and stretch their legs, use the bathroom, get that air. It's pretty hot in this land center here, but, uh, you know, we're doing what we can, making do. That was a great game. I was so glad to be casting that one, and it was so similar to their first matchup. Just, like, super grindy, really good jumps and, like, clean play, chain CC on all these heroes. High level of play from both teams, and I was really impressed that Kowlin Monks were able to close that out. They got real late there, like, like, sketchily, scarily late with these cores coming real online for UEC Esports, but they just weren't quite able to hold. They lost too much base damage already. This Shaman, I'm telling you, was, was crucial to these pushes. Those wards he got down just took out buildings. Unbelievable to get that out of a 5 position. He's really good in this patch. Well, we're going to be taking a very short break. Everybody's stretching their legs, checking the replays. It's best of three, thanks for asking. Um, it was best of five, potentially, but uh, people didn't have time. We ran pretty late, so best of three for the grand finals as well. UBC down one nothing, and uh, Kowlin Monk's poised to take down the whole thing if they take down the second game. I've been Lights. Thanks for joining me. We'll be back very shortly. Hope you all having a good time. I definitely am. And uh, I'll see you very soon. Game 2 coming right up.